your home for over 17 years of horse racing action. The Sport of Kings, featuring Tommy Wolski. On today's show, the girls are back. Stephanie catches you up on all the news. Tom takes you on the road to the Breeders' Cup, the battle of the sexes match race. Our salute to the champions features Canadian-owned legend Majestic Prince. And now here he is, BC's ambassador to the world of horse racing, Mr. Tommy Walski. For years, the sport of horse racing has always been presumed to be a sport just for men only. In recent years, all that has changed, thanks to some groundbreaking riders such as two jockeys you're about to visit. That would be jockey Tammy Snow and Anrella Villachey. We recently sat down with these two former riders, and their take on the sport is quite interesting. And we also asked them, do they remember their first ride? My actual first race was up in Kamloops, because I figured we'd go up there and get the bugs out. And I remember, because Mel, Mel Snow held my horse in the gate. He was my gate crew. And I remember we loaded in, and he, he said something to me, and I went to speak to him, and I, nothing came out. It's just like, it was like instant dry mouth. I broke on the horse's mouth. I was supposed to make the lead. I was dead last. It was, but I got that out of the way. So when I came here, then uh, I rode a couple. I think I I only rode three or four races before I win. I don't remember the horse's exact name, but I remember it was for Richard Cloutier, and uh, it was a it was night racing, and it was dark and it was muddy, <laughs> and I come from last circled the field, I must have been like eight wide turning for home. There wasn't any saving any ground and ended up winning at, I think it was 30 to one or something. I remember my first win, it was my first ride actually. And um, I was on a horse that lugs in really bad and all the guys were saying, oh, don't let her ride, don't let her ride, it's her first mount. And I ended up circling the field and uh, it was cool, funny, it was a real muddy day and I pulled my went to pull my goggles down and of course they all came down except for the last pair. So. But thank God it was really wet because it just washed away <laughs> and I was last. And I had worked the horse in the morning a lot and I galloped him in the morning, so I knew him really well. And, uh, you know, the horse would just turn his head sideways and I'd just sort of keep him out there and, you know, do my best steering. I don't even think I hit him. <laughs> I just steered him around there and <laughs> we got lucky. Yeah, yeah it was, it was um, what an incredible feeling that was, boy. I, I remember galloping out and going, woo! You know, at the top of my lungs, it was amazing. A ritual that goes on for years. They did, we've got footage of Tammy getting drowned, the water bit. Are you girls surprised when this happens? Or are you I think it? I'd forgotten about it because I was just on cloud nine and then all of a sudden they're throwing buckets at me and somebody had the hose. So I just went, I give up. And <laughs> there's a picture of me standing like this, letting me get, like, they're hosing me down like crazy. But it was muddy anyway, so I thought, oh, they're cleaning me off. <laughs> What made you pack it in? There was a few um, mitigating factors. One of them was I, the politics was getting to me. It was pretty tough. Both Mel and John, um, in backing me, had actually lost clients where they had said they didn't want to ride me. And uh, they both had said that they wouldn't pull me. So the owners then took their horses. So I, it was starting to get to be too much of a battle and uh, as well as John and I had been talking about having children and everything. So I had had fun, it had been a good run, and I just thought it was just getting too tough. It's time to maybe go ahead and start having a children, but I only had one. What made you give it up? Um, it got to the point where I was riding a lot of bad horses, and once you get kind of on a downward spiral with riding, it's hard to get back up again because you know, if you're not winning, they don't put you on the good horses, and then you don't look good, and it's just, it, it was just getting a little sour, and a lot of work just for, you know, to run last all the time, and I mean, in the heart of every jockey, Tammy will know, I mean, is winning, you gotta win, you know, it keeps you, keeps you going, it keeps you alive, it keeps you uh, enjoying what you do, and if you're just getting beat all the time, it's no fun. There were trainers that I didn't, wouldn't ride me back when I was riding that are now, um, have no problem putting me girls on so I think it has come a long way I think we're still maybe a little bit more behind than other tracks that I've been to because I know I've gone uh, down to California and that when I rode down there I actually was ahead of uh, Ben Russell who was a leading rider at Emerald and uh, 
and uh, Fleet Valdez was down there riding at the time, and I was kicking all their butts. I was top ten because they just they they liked you, they put you on, they didn't care what your gender was. It's not quite that easy up here, but it's it's definitely a lot better. Is it easier now than when you girls were riding to get started? I mean, it's getting better and better all the time. You know, I mean, the same as Tammy, I had trainers then that told me, don't waste your shoe leather. You know, that are riding girls now, and, and I mean, you know, it would have been nice then, but, you know, I mean, it was, it was better when we rolled than it was for the girls before us, you know, and it's getting better now for, you know, for the girls now than it was for us, and I'm sure, you know, you know, eventually it'll be like California, like Tammy was saying about California, we'll have nothing to do with our gender, it'll be if they like you, and if you can ride, and, uh, you know, the gender shouldn't really come into play. I mean, when I look back at how tough we were, I mean, we were tougher and stronger than most of the guys that are riding now. Yeah, you were. Oh, yeah, you know. There, there wasn't a lot of horses we wouldn't ride, whether they were bad or sore, or, you know, we'd get banged around, and we'd still come back and ride, you know, come back kicking. And we didn't let those guys push us around just because we were girls, you know. In fact, we, we were almost more tough because we had something to prove, you know. What did you enjoy most about being a rider? The adrenaline rush, definitely when you break out of the gate and it was just such a rush. I've never felt that in anything else I've ever done in my life is that adrenaline rush when those gates pop and it's just like, wow. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, there's nothing like it, you know, in the world. Just winning a race and feeling like you had something to do with that horse running and you, know, you made all the right decisions and guiding that horse to the winner's, the, the, you know, in front of the wire first. It's just, it's indescribable. It, it really is. Being one with an animal too, like I mean, you can't really compare it to race car driving or things like that because you're you're actually connecting with an animal and and it's just it's an amazing feeling. Do you miss it now? I definitely do. You know, you you get the in the back of your head the odd oh maybe I'll you know I did a couple years ago road one and it was like I suppose I need the oxygen mask when I got back because I definitely wasn't racing fit, but. So you do miss it, but I really enjoy with what I'm doing now with uh, my husband John and I working together, and we're having a great year, and so it's been a lot of fun. I went up to Kamloops a couple times and had my little uh, little flashbacks of winning up there, and that was kind of fun. It had its place, and you know now I think I'm getting a little older. Once in a while, I fantasize about having my bug again. You know what it would be like now, the things I know now, and the way things are opening up for girls now how much better it would be now, but, you know, I had my fun, and it's time to <laughs> move on to other things. What are you doing now? I'm exercising and ponying. I take them in the afternoon with my pony. I got my pony mojo, and, uh, um, you know, we're working away. I'm galloping for some nice barns and getting on some really nice horses now, so that's kind of really, really enjoyable and rewarding. You know, I get on some for Mel Snow and uh, Troy Taylor. You guys are working with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does all our pony work for us in the afternoons, both uh, my husband and I and, and Mel's as well. And she gets on horses for me and helps me school my babies. And Yeah, so it's fun. I, I, we actually get along really well, and it's fun sometimes. We get reminiscing about racing and laughing and who we liked and didn't like. And <laughs> what a coincidence, though, the two of you working together. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, a lot of girls, like, really, that have ridden in the past, there's not too many left around. They've all dispersed, gone elsewhere. So it's, it's really fun to still have Annie in the, in the barn, so to speak, with us. Were you surprised when you retired years after you'd be working in the same barn no, with it's, Tammy? It's great. I mean, when we rode together, we used to get along really good. And so, you know, being in the same barn now is kind of natural. It feels kind of natural, you know. We're, we're both... Uh, you know, I think we're quite similar in a lot of ways. You know, we both love our jobs and we both like to enjoy ourselves and have fun and joke around and, you know, we're pretty happy at work. So it's kind of, it's nice. Yeah. Don't go away. The Sport of Kings. We'll be right back. It's 2003, Del Mar Racetrack held the rare match race with two super jockeys on horses of equal ability. What made this race unique? 
I'm not sure if one, but the two who the riders were. They were male and female. Jockey Pat Valenzuela represented the males, and Julie Crone obviously represents the females. Interesting and exciting finish. It's a little phony. And away they go in the Battle of the Sexes match race, and Julie Crone pops the gate here with Woke Up Dreaming, and Julie Crone goes straight to the lead, but Pat Valenzuela wants that lead. He's now sending Chester's Choice through down at the rail. They run to the 7 8 pole, and Chester's Choice has come through quickly on the inside now, but they nose and nose as they go past the 7 8 pole. Chester's Choice and Pat Valenzuela is on a loose rein. He's having to ask him to keep up down at the rail. Woke up dreaming, and Julie Crowen very comfortable on the outside, and they're flying along too. They go on to the back stretch, still a nose separating them. Julie Crow now putting the head of Woke Up Dreaming just in front. Chester's choice, Pat Valenzuela having to work at him to keep up on the inside, but however, they are still nose and nose as Chester's choice comes right back. This has to be the quintessential match race out here. Just a dream. They nose and nose almost from the opening of the gate. Chester's choice, Pat Valenzuela at the rail. Woke up dreaming and Julie Crone still sitting snug on the outside. They go past the three-eighths pole, head and head. Chester's choice, can he dig deep and find more now? Woke up dreaming, still nose and nose as they come to this quarter pole. Woke up dreaming on the outside, now asked to kick on for home. And Julie Crone's looking strong. Julie's opening up. Chester's Choice tries to find more. Pat Valenzuela urging, but Chester's Choice is a very weary second. They turn for home now and woke up dreaming. He's also kind of tired. These two have gone at it. Ding dong from the opening of the gate. Woke up dreaming, breathing fire, but he's hanging on. Chester's Choice and Pat Valenzuela making one last desperate run at them. Julie Crone has to get something more out of woke up dreaming. Woke up dreaming. Chester's Choice a dream finish. Pat Valenzuela gets up. Chester's Choice beats Woke Up Dreaming in a photo. And now entering the winner's circle is the winner of the Battle of the Sexes match race, Pat Valenzuela on number one, Chester's Choice. He's a three-year-old Bay Colt by Afternoon Delights out of Enjoy the View. He's owned by Robert Rupert and the winning trainer, Summer Maybury. And now, to get you up to date with all the happenings in and around the track, let's saddle up with our own Stephanie Mercier. Tomorrow, August 17th, will be the 73rd running of the Grade 3 Long Acres Mile. The race is run at Emerald Downs in Seattle, and being so nearby always attracts some local horses, especially with the $300,000 purse. Local favorite True Metropolitan will be running, and Rossberg, who ran in the BC Cup Sprint, is also nominated. We caught up with trainer Dino Condolinios to find out whether Rossberg will be a contender. The plan is that we'd like to run him there. Um, we're just waiting to see how he um, comes out of his race. He seems like he's come out of his race not too bad right now, but I'd like to gallop him back in the next couple of days and make sure he's, uh, he's training the way I'd like him to, to be coming up to the race. If he's not 100%, uh, I'm definitely not going to run him. Um, but all along, that's kind of why we ran him in the sprint. This is more of a prep than, than anything. Um, he had run in a long time, so he really needed that race. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. As long as he's doing, doing, doing fine, that's the plan. As part of Hastings Community Benefits Program, the racetrack is in the middle of a free family movie series. They've already shown Shrek, E.T. and The Wizard of Oz. The final three movies have now been decided. On Fridays in September, movie fans can come watch The Pirates of the Caribbean, Spider-Man and Napoleon Dynamite. Exact movie times will be announced closer to the dates. Also part of the Community Benefits Initiative, the boardwalk around the infield is nearly complete. Soon, people will be able to walk around and enjoy the infield during the weekdays. We caught up with Hastings General Manager Raj Moody to get an update on the progress. On uh, the boardwalk, we're almost, uh, the work's picking up quite a bit. Hope to be done uh, early September and then have it uh, active, actively used uh, mid to late September. Uh, a lot of work's being done, a lot of progress is being made, so it's starting to look, uh, look pretty good so far. 2007 Preakness Stakes and Breeders' Cup Classic winner Curlin is going back to a dirt track. He'll be running next in the Grade 1 $500,000 Woodward Stakes on August 20th at Saratoga Racetrack in New York. Curlin took a shot at Belmont Park's turf track in July but finished second. According to the thoroughbredtimes.com, Curlin's trainer Steve Asmussen said while they considered running the four-year-old for higher purses, they wanted to run him at Saratoga because of its historic venue and because Curlin has been training there since July. In other major horse racing news, 2008 Triple Crown hopeful Big Brown is back in the news after winning the Haskell at Monmouth Park a few weeks ago. 
Where he's headed next, though, is unclear. According to